Rise Garage. Today we're going to be working on this 2007 Dodge Caravan. This is a 3.3 liter V6. Right there. We're going to be changing out the transmission fluid. I'm going to show you how to do this. Everything is pretty much done underneath the vehicle. The only thing up here in the engine is our fill hose right there. So for this job, it's pretty straightforward. We just need our gasket, our filter, of course. We need both of those. We need our transmission fluid. This is ATF plus four. We need a torque wrench. We need a set of sockets and a ratchet. We need a drain pan and a funnel. We need an empty jug of milk. You're also going to want to have a putty knife and shop towels. You're also going to need this blow hammer, more than likely. We'll also need either ramps or jacks. Also, make sure you got your gloves and safety glasses on. That is a must. The last thing you want is this transmission fluid in your eyes. I would imagine it wouldn't feel too good. Make sure you have your vehicle's emergency brake on or you have blocks on your rear wheels. So before we go to the bottom to start releasing the bolts on the pan, let's take a look at this. This is our dipstick. It's just located on the right side, just below the battery. Here's our dipstick. We're looking at the fluid right there. Um, doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's see. Here, let's uh, wipe it off and take a real clean inspection of it. All right, and it shows it's to the max on the on the cold level. So you have a cold and you have a hot on your fill level right there. Okay, so before starting this task. Make sure you start your car and let it warm up for about 5-10 minutes. Let it get uh, warm enough so it heats up the transmission fluid and it also will make the gasket around the transmission pan a little bit more pliable. Alright, so now that we have our van up in the air, we are going to start work on this. One thing that I like to do is... Just place the gasket out in the sun and try to lay it flat. This will make it easier to apply when putting your gasket onto your pan. And here is our transmission gasket and filter. This is B102 ATP. Um, part number is B102 and it's from ATP. Um, so here's our filter. This is what it looks like. This is the side that goes up under, that connects onto the transmission. This side is what's visible when you open up your transmission pan. And then here's our gasket. So this is the fluid that we're gonna be changing out. This is from O'Reilly. You can use any brand you want. I bought O'Reilly because they had it in a gallon. Some people have it in quartz and other things. I was trying to get a gallon of Valvoline, but they didn't have it. You can order it, but they just didn't have it available. So this is what we're going to be changing. ATF plus four. Make sure you are getting the plus four on whatever brand you buy. That's the important part. So automatic transmission fluid plus four. Anything other than ATF four, any other types of transmission fluid, could shorten the life of your transmission. So make sure it is this ATF plus four on this specific vehicle. So the transmission pan is directly in the front on the driver's side. It is located right here. There's your oil pan over on the passenger side. So don't get that confused. Again, here is our transmission pan. Keep in mind, there is no drain plug on this transmission pan. That's why we're having to remove the pan to place a gasket on there. 
I know, dumb, but it's the way it is. So there are several 10 millimeter bolts under here. They're located right there at the top of the pan. They're all around the pan's gasket. And so we will be removing those. Okay, so under here on our transmission pan, we have 14 10 millimeter bolts that go all the way around. There's 14. And then we have one 10 millimeter right here. It is a nut that holds on to a bracket on our pan. Okay, so now with my safety glasses on, got my gloves, my 10 millimeter ratchet. Again, we're just going to go around all of these bolts. We're going to loosen them up with this wrench, except for the four corners. We're going to leave those in for right now, nice and tight for right now. But we're going to go around, loosen up all 14 millimeter bolts, and go from there. We're just going to break them free. Okay, so we now have all 10 bolts uh, taken out of our pan, including our 10 millimeter nut right there. Okay, so now that we got all of our bolts out, we're now going to take our drain pan, slide it under, and what we're going to do is release, we're going to loosen up these four bolts in these corners just very lightly. We're going to start with these back ones. And we're going to try to drain it just out one side, just out the back while leaving these ones, these two front ones, a little loose. So let's loosen these four corners up. Okay, so we now have all four corners loosened up. We're going to take our little blow hammer and we're going to slight, we're going to lightly tap the edges here. To try to loosen up the pan as much as we can. Okay, so after tapping the four corners to try to loosen it up, it's not working too well. One thing I wanted to show you is you can see that there is a type of glue right there that they used on this gasket. We're more than likely going to have to use our putty knife to separate the gasket from the block. One thing we want to be very careful with is we don't scar up the, the block. So as we're sliding the putty knife in between the pan and the block, we want to make sure it's nice, flat, and smooth, and just take your time going around it. We want to start with the back, back here, just so we have only one side that's going to drain. That way we can have more control over what comes out and how fast. Okay, so once you break the seal, it's going to start leaking down it's going to leak down really fast once you open up this pan it's just basically going to dump um so that's why i had you leave on these two bolts you're just cracking these bolts and then you loosened up the the back two and this will drain it nice and slow um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a putty knife right here and i'm just going to run it up along the the edge of the sill. I'm just going to slowly begin to remove the glue that was put onto the gasket. Okay, so now that you got one corner removed, go ahead and take that bolt out and just work around this one corner, any corner, um, one of the back ones, and you're just going to slowly release the pan just like that. Okay, so we're just going to let this drain. One thing, make sure you have a cardboard underneath your pan just so uh, you don't get a bunch of transmission fluid all over your driveway just so you don't piss off the wife. Anyway, 
So now that we broke that seal, we can now go ahead and remove our front two bolts and continue to uh, drop the pan and let that drain. We now have our pan off, so we're just going to slide our drip pan under there. We're going to continue to let it drip, but what we're going to do is we're going to remove this filter. You're going to see a little bit more um, transmission fluid come out. Now keep in mind, this by far is not all the transmission fluid in your system. There is a lot more in it. This is one drain. More than likely, you're going to have to do this a few times. I am going to release this filter and you'll see a lot more fluid come out. There you go. We're just going to let that all drain completely. And we're going to move on to the pan. Okay, so here's a pan. And inside the pan, you'll notice there's a lot of black sludge. Like that. If you can see it. Um, that's typically normal. That's part of uh, transmission wear. Um, the other thing you'll notice is this magnet. There's a magnet in here. And it has a bunch of that sludge as well. What you're looking for is impurities in the transmission fluid. You're looking for metal pieces and shavings and su stuff like that. So I'm not seeing any, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to clean out the pan. We're going to clean up this magnet and we're going to look a little bit deeper. Okay, so after looking at it a little closer, there was no metal in the system, nothing in the bottom of the pan. That's a good sign. That's what you want. Next thing we're going to do is just take this putty knife, and we're just going to go along this edge here, and we're just going to scrape off all of this gasket. Okay, so I got my pan all cleaned out, got the sludge all out. I got all the adhesive, the, the silicone gasket that was around the edge. Um, now I've replaced it with this new belt gasket and one thing I was telling you earlier is this uh, these gaskets can be a little uh, like have a bend to them that's kind of difficult to get out so putting them in the Sun works um, but one thing you can do is stick your bolts up from up and under in each hole and then place them under there and that will hold your gasket in place and then just set it in the sun and let it seed down we're gonna um, the other thing the other thing we did was clean our magnet and put it back and so that's about it with the pan as far as right now goes the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean off the bottom of the block okay so now that we've been letting our transmission bleed a little bit and drain you'll now notice we have some buildup of silicone all along the edge there so that's going to have to be removed so i would suggest that you have a plastic putty knife if you have one and i'm having a hard time finding mine right now but if you use a plastic putty knife you'll ensure you don't scrape up this uh, aluminum block here that's the last thing you want to do this thing's um, very easy to scar up so we're, we're gonna clean this up one option I have is a scrubby to get some of that off so we're gonna clean it up nice and slow so here's our old gasket here's our new notice our new has the rubber o-ring on it where our old one does not so here we go now we have the surface of our block all clean our right there where our gasket's gonna go it's continuing to leak which is fine one thing I wanted to point out is as I was cleaning this I noticed the rubber o-ring that was on our old filter right there was still lodged in to there 
So make sure you verify that your O-ring isn't in there. So one thing I wanted to bring up is this gasket. This is a felt gasket. Now there are various types of gaskets. You can have a cork gasket, rubber gasket, felt gasket, just a silicone gasket. In my case, I'm choosing to use this felt gasket. Some people put a little sealant around it. I choose not to. This I found this adequate enough and it works. So this is what I'm going to do. And so everybody has their own preference on gaskets. And it can be debated forever and ever. But this is what I'm choosing. Okay, so we're now going to put back on our filter. If you'll notice, that's where your rubber o-ring goes. And then there are two posts. They are located right there and right there. And then on our aluminum block, right there. And right there so we're just gonna match all that up put in our filter and it will just snug up okay next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drain our used transmission fluid into our milk jug okay so now that we've drained our used transmission fluid we can see how much came out of there that way we know how much refill back into our system. This is approximately about a gallon, so we'll at least do a gallon and some for some of the overspill that happened. Okay, so we now have our filter back on. It just simply pops up and snugs up against aluminum block up there up to your transmission. So it, it just basically is, uh, is held on by that rubber washer the rubber o-rings, excuse me. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna put the bottom of the pan back on. Remember, we've already put our gasket on our pan and the bolts into the pan and gasket. Again, we're not gonna use a any type of silicone or anything like that. We are just gonna do a dry gasket on this vehicle. And again, it's debatable. People are going to have their own opinion on what you should use. Um, this did have a sealant on it um, when I took it off, and that's all there was. There was no like felt gasket or rubber gasket or anything like that. And I've never had an issue. It's never dripped. But I've also never had an issue with these uh, felt gaskets. So we're going to put that on, and we're just simply going to hold it up and hand tighten every bolt. So now we got all of our pan bolts hand tightened. We're now going to use a torque wrench and torque them down. We're going to start with this bolt here. We're going to cross the pan and get that one there. And we're going to go to this one. We're going to cross the pan and get this one. And we're going to keep doing that alternating the way we go around the pan just so it's nice and secure. Now different pans have different different foot pounds of, of uh, torque on them. Um, also depending on what gasket you used you'll want to you'll want to look that up. So on this I'm going to start out doing six pounds on each bolt and then go and go through all of them and then I'm going to do nine pounds and then up to 12 pounds and then that's my limit with this gasket. But that is on this type of vehicle and this type of gasket. So there are variations in the torque on specific cars and the gaskets you use. Okay, so the bolts are properly torqued on the bottom with the new gasket, new filter. So now we're going to move our little level stick and we're going to fill it up properly. Remember, we drained approximately a gallon of transmission flu fluid, so that's how much we'll put back, as well as a little extra for the spillage that we lost. Okay, so we filled up our fluid until it reached the, the cold mark as far as being filled. So we are now going to start up our vehicle and cycle through all the gears. 
this will help get all the new transmission fluid in between all the gears. All right, so again, we're gonna cycle through the gears. Right now we are in park, reverse, neutral, drive, third, low, one at a time, back to third, drive, neutral, reverse, and back in the park. We're going to do that just a couple times. So this will be the first time we're changing out the transmission fluid in this vehicle that I know of. Um, it's always a good idea to do it a few times, like about three, because every time you do it, all you're doing is getting rid of the fluid that's inside the pan and a little bit up above. You're not doing your whole transmission. And then the next time I do this, I'll drive it around for about three weeks and get it mixed up with the good and the, the old stuff. And, and then I'll do it again a third time in about a week or two weeks later and try to get out the remaining. And again, it doesn't get it out 100%. It doesn't get out the bad stuff 100%, but it does get out most of it. So on that last one, I will change the filter and the gasket again. They're fairly cheap. They're about, for the kid, it's about 10 bucks or so. It's not very much. So it's worth it to me to do that just so you get all the old fluid out of your vehicle. All right, so here is drain number two. This is about one week after the first one. Yeah, so it's draining it looks pretty good here's the pan I just wiped it clean let me show you this this is the cloth I used to wipe out the bottom this time there was no sludge uh, the magnet was pretty clean however let me show you this this is the exact same one I bought last time this ATP it was the filter and gasket I have it have not opened it yet um, this is my second one though Here's the gasket so one thing I noticed when I took this off is my filter was laying in the bottom so it came unhooked from the transmission so I am NOT gonna recommend that I'm going to put this in but I'm going to do a third one and I'm gonna switch brands on my third one one thing I can say is their gasket was really nice um, no leaks whatsoever at all i mean it was it was perfect but this fell right off and one thing i also noticed is your little rubber gasket there your o-ring that's what i had a hard time pushing in on the first time it just uh wouldn't seed properly and i'm gonna try it again and when i also when i went to pull that off i don't have my gasket so i'm assuming it's up in the little drain hole up there. But I don't know for sure. I haven't looked yet. But anyway, I'm going to dig that out. I'm going to put this all back together. And this is number two. I'll show you what the liquid looks like. As you can see, just judging by this, it's a lot cleaner than the last one. So that is drain number two. Okay, so we now have a new gasket, a new filter, we have new fluid in our system, and we've cycled through the gears and everything's working just great. So, um, if you like this video and it worked for you, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Thanks again and have a great day.